Well hello people, <laughs> it's host Peter here, <laughs> down in the old man shed, <laughs> yeah so quickly after the last one. Well why, why, have I, why have I come back down here? Well the weather wasn't too bad today, it's, it's quite mild considering where we are in the year and so I thought myself, I did say on the last video that if I was going to attack another class 37 and do the back-to-back uh, -back measurements I would show you how you get to the wheel sets you know, which means taking off the bogey frames and the base keeper plates to reveal the wheel sets so that I could get them out and re-gauge them. So that's exactly what I've done guys, alright? So this is a how-to video and also it's just showing you the insides of a class, a Curiscale class 37. Now in, in, the, uh, in the video I made where I said, uh, you know, problems with the 37s, you know, um, part one, in that one, when you follow it through, you will see how I got to the motor, which involved unsoldering the pickup wires from the PCB board. I've not had to do that this time. I did take the body, you know, took the body shell off, showed you, in this time, I've shown you not only getting off the bogey frames and get to the uh, base keeper plate to get to the wheels, but I've also shown you how you get the cab floor off, you know, where the figures are sitting. If you wanted to get to the gear tower, uh, you would have to remove the, the flooring and you probably think to yourself, oh, it's, it's still stuck down. No, it, all right, I'll just explain everything to you. So carry on watching the video. I've filmed it all, um, not every single step, you know, because it's hard to do it with a camera in front of you, but um, in, enough to give you an idea. I mean, I, I didn't film putting it all back together again because uh, you, you have to be careful. Yeah? You need a nice set of tools. Um, the bogey chains get in the way no matter what, you know, but you have to work around them and, you know, they didn't break or anything, you know, it shouldn't be violent doing whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> so if you've got a, a good set of tools and good eyesight, <laughs> yeah, well, my good eyesight involves, um, you know, as I said before, me, me reading glasses or the magnifying uh, lamp thing that I put on my head, okay? Uh, but that's it. So enjoy i hope this i hope it's of use to everybody even if you don't you know at least it shows you what's inside the acura scale 37s how they're made up bloody brilliant really um so that's it all right guys so enjoy and i'll catch you next time all right so all the very very best bye <laughs> right here comes 37606 going straight across the points and as you can see absolutely no trouble going across the points now 37606 is the one that I worked on worked on the motor and uh, as you can see uh, it's running fine so that's been a success but what I want to do is look at the back-to-back -back settings this one's not been adjusted yet and you're thinking to yourself well why do I want to adjust it because in a straight line it's going across the points fine and yeah you're right so I could leave it at that but let's just show you why, you know, I want to do something and what I've already done to its sister uh, loco, 37609. Right, let it come through one more time. So going across the points, absolutely no problem at all. Right. Right, so when it gets to this point here, you might see the wheel jerk a little bit on that side and you, you should hear a slight knock. Not much. There you go. Not enough to derail it, but definitely she's hitting the front of the frog. So now change direction. And so now it should do it going back at this at this point. So you might see it go over. So let's see. No, it wasn't so bad going back. What I do like to see is the chain stretching. I think you can see, right, let's bring her back. I think you can see the chains uh, being stretched out as it goes across the second radius um, of the curves of these set track points, okay? So again, when it gets to the plastic frog, we should hear a little knock. There you go. There you go. Max, you can send it back. Uh, 
and this is why I want to adjust the back to back because okay she's not derailing there you go did you hear that one that one that was a real good clonk and that's what's annoying me so although she is going across the points um, you know nevertheless it's not perfect is it and that no you know no um, fault of Acuras Cal because the back to back settings is what is supposed to be for double O gauge but Hornby set track points the flange the we'll have a look at the um, the wheels and compare it to a Hornby product and see you know how thick the Hornby wheels are compared to the fine scale of these fine models I mean that's the thing I mean you, you know there they are oh that's that this one's a, a Backman one okay so uh, but they all they all look well together okay right so we are going to bring now uh, the uh, 37609 her sister that I have adjusted the back to backs So it's going over the same speed. So this one I've taken the uh, the side frames off the uh, bogies and then been able to get to the base keeper plate and adjust the back to back settings. Take the wheel sets out and adjust the back to back settings. So now you see that perfect not a sound it's funny isn't it it's just literally you know it's, it's so little difference in the measurement between you know the, what the double o gauge should be and uh, what i've had to set these two using my hold up quiet nothing i do like the way those chains stretch out when they come back really quite good do it again and then we go on and see about showing you how you do get to the base keeper plate so that if you need in my case I want to adjust the back to back settings or if you've got any other trouble with the wheels and it's amazing isn't it just a small slight difference and that's it right I can stop it now so there we are so this one I have done, the first one I haven't. And you saw the difference, and even heard. <laughs> right, so let's get into uh, a, an Acura Scale Class 37 then, shall we? And uh, you should all know by now how to remove the body itself. So, as you know, there's a clip there, a clip there, a clip there, and you know, four clips, yeah? Now, if you've got any semblance of fingernails, I now use my fingernails to put it underneath there and just prise open the body shell. Keep it nice and low. I'll just get my fingernails in position. One on that side, one on that side. Keep it low onto the bench because you let the weight of the motor pull it off. Get it nice and square and off she comes. Simple as. Okay. So... Uh, this one that's how easy it is yeah to fit your figures all right and as you can see at that end my figures have been fitted a little bit of black tack underneath these are Acura Scales figures so they fit perfectly and there you go before I start looking at the bogey frames um, you've already seen how I've taken off the uh, PCB ball to get to the motor inside on another video you know where I where I fixed this motor and to strip it down so I'll show you how to get all this lot off um, also pointed out the fact that the pickups from the bogies are actually soldered to four points on the PCB board okay and also the motor wire is also I think it's there soldered to the PCB board whereas everything else from the lights is all plugged in okay so you will need to solder However, although we saw the motor and we could see the drive shafts going to the, uh, the, uh, the gear towers, we didn't see the top of the gear towers because you got, you know, the, uh, obviously the cab detail in place. Now you can, this is, this is held in place with a peg, four pegs, 
one, two, three, four. No glue, but you might find that it is stuck a little bit because you can see here the wires which are being all trapped underneath. They're held in place with something sticky and it does sometimes, it can affect getting the plate off. What you've got to do, you've just got to prise gently side by side a little bit, you know, because, you, because you're working on wires because there we are my wires and then bear in mind that here you've got the cab lights uh, the, um, the the dials you know so when you lift it up you see you have a wire attached yeah because that's going to the back of the clocks that's on the dashboard but there you are there's your gear tower and there you can see the end of the uh, drive shaft coming from the motor getting into uh, you know taking the drive to the so this is a clip-on you know, clip there, clip there, either side. It's a usual practice on other makers to do it as well. Hornby, um, I think uh, Dapol, you know, they might do it. So that's that's how, if need be. And here you can see now the black wire coming up. There it is. That's the, that's the wire going down, down to the pickups. There it is there and there. Okay. So that's how you would get to the top of the gear towers if, in case you wanted to grease them or whatever. You might sort of think to yourself, yeah, let's take the clip from there if I want to work on the bogies and let the bogies drop down. Well, yes, you can do that. Let's get me a screwdriver. But don't forget, the chain is attached to the chassis there. So these bogies will not drop down. You know, you would drop it all down, but it would be held on by the two chains. That's why I'm going to have to do it with the bogey in situ. Right, I'm just going to stop that whilst I put this little thing back and uh, make sure that all the wires... There's the four pegs. You see? One, two, three, four. And you've got to make sure that you do trap the wires back in place. There's some sort of something sticky there, so it, it, when you're trying to prise it up your cab floor, it might be a little bit tricky because there's something sticky there keeping all these wires in check, OK? Right, I'm going to stop the camera whilst I put this back carefully because I want to put it, you know, I don't need that off for now. OK. OK, so I've got the cab floor back on again and to trap the wires properly so nothing's coming out, so that's fine. So right now, the fun begins. So I'm going to put it in its cradle. So now we're going to have a look at how the bogey frames are attached to the base keeper plate, this base keeper plate. And it's held by no fewer than one, two, three, four, five, six places. Yep, that's right. So let me zoom in. So hopefully you will see. Yeah. So what you've got on the bottom of, the, of these um, bogey frames, you have a rod that goes across from side to side at the front of the, of the brake blocks or the brake actuation, activation underneath. So there's a little rod there. I, you may have um, lot, you know found that it's come out before now. It's on both ends. There's the rod on this end here. Yeah. The frame is attached to the base keeper plate primarily there and there on both sides, obviously. And on also, this is the front of the base keeper plate there where it goes out at an angle. And that plastic mechanism slots into it there, and it also slots in on the end there as well. See, there's there's the end of the base keeper plate, and it goes off there to join onto the uh, side of the bogies. This 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 um, the edge of the brake lever here. It slots in there, and that little rod goes into the bottom there. The little rod fits in the bottom there, and the and the main base keeper plate goes in there. Um, before you go this far, you can see that I've actually you can see you see this part is two pieces on this on this uh, bogey frame. I've glued them together there with a bit of super glue. You can see it's underneath, so you can't see it because there is a little peg there. That part is you know joins them both together, but it is only all the push fit. And when I did this the first time, these two halves came away and it was a bit of a faff because you're dealing with, you know, lots of uh, detail stuff coming apart on you. 
All right, so do yourself a favor before you even get to this stage, put a little bit of glue to glue these two pieces together. See, if I put my screwdriver in there, I probably I could actually sort of separate. Well, I can't because it's glued. But that you can see this half, this bit there, and that bit there. They're two separate pieces, and it joins nicely there with a little peg. So it just it just lends itself nicely to just run a little bit of super glue on there, and a, you know a bit on that side, and it keeps this together. When you come to leave, now you need you're going to have to lever this off. You see, this is how it works. You will end up with this rod either coming out with either that side or coming out with this, this side so don't watch be careful of this rod when you start levering this apart okay so let's see I'm gonna go in there and uh, maybe choose a different uh, maybe if I can get the light in a, a light let me shine a light <laughs> he says maybe we can then definitely see yeah here we are so and uh, then I've got to see what I'm doing. So in here, yeah, it, you need to get in there and you need to prise that apart. Just a little bit of twist it with a screwdriver and you will take it off. But you can see it's also pulling it off from this end. So let's have a look. I'm going to uh, just check. Maybe I think I need a better screwdriver because this is too thin. So I'm going to get a different thing. But you prise that apart there because as I say, it's one, two three and the other end is four and then you've got this bar that goes across on both ends and then of course this keeper plate itself is, is clipped in place right hold on right okay I've got a bet better screwdriver to do this with now so yes in there and a little twist and there you go you can see how so she's already separated at that end let's put one in there Give a little twist. So I'm twisting against the base keeper plate and this plastic bit with the spade, you know, the blade of the screw. Oh, well, there we go. All right. So be careful. Now it's now you can uh, I can use the, on the wheel, and there we have it. And there the rod is holding in place. Now you can see why that rod is actually still attached inside that one so i'm going to do the same down below on this one so let's have a look because hopefully that rod will come away one two and it's not separating so i'm going to have to turn the camera off because i want to get this rod out and that end, the rod has come out, you see, there's the end of the rod there. But she's not coming out easily from this side. And if I carry on, as you can see, look, you see the two parts are coming to part. So if that wasn't now glued together there, this would all be folding apart. <laughs> so let's see if I can uh, tease this off. You've got to be careful because there's only a very fine bit of plastic. don't want to be too vicious with it. I mean, if the rod comes out either on this side or on the other side. That's all it's holding on there, is this rod. There we are. Did it come off? Should be off. There we go. We're off. And, of course, you can't pull it off because it's on its chain. And there we have it, guys. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So, looking at the end, that's the base keeper plate has to go into that hole there. That hole there, that hole there, and that hole there. And then you've got the tiniest of little holes there where this little rod there goes back into. Okay? But that is how you get the side frame off. And of course, you know, with the fact it's got the chain on it, fair enough. You know, it's not doing any harm now because he's just folding down the side there. Oh! Right, got to just take the other side off and then I will get the base keeper plate off. Okay, all right, be back. Right, here we are. So there's this one off this side and, uh, you know, as I, as I said, this one has got the little rod has stayed in place at both ends, okay? So attached by its chain, so it's not going anywhere, but that's fine. Right, base keeper plate. Um, I'm hoping, let's have a look from what I remember, 
you've got to just tease this one back and that's already come away so that's already off from the end I'll now get my small nice very small screwdriver and start teasing off the uh, the caps down the side there's one on that side let's do this one you need a nice nice small screwdriver for this you know to get underneath come on yeah that one's off work your way to the front I found was the best place to do this Does that one come off yet yeah. that's it so now it's just held in place by the front so I'm going to just um, lift holding the wheel down I'm going to try and lift it off the front there we go so look at the base keeper plate itself as I said so it attaches the, the side frames attaches to there and uh, there don't forget as well as what's on the on the bogey itself so there we are that's what your gears look like guys nicely greased up I'm gonna have to take the wheels out now and with my back-to-back -back settings I'll show you here this is my little back-to-back -back gauges I'll just get them out one's the there we are so one's 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 the Acura scale uh, not Acura scale DCC concepts and as you can see it's supposed to be uh, 145 okay so that is what they're set to at the moment I'm going to take one out there we are and if I put that in there it fits that perfectly lovely absolutely spot on so it's not a curious scale's fault but my Hornby set track points likes this little thing here and this is a Golden Valley Hobbies 00 gauge wheel checker 14.40 so if I was to put that on there now she fits in there too easily all right there's no resistance put that against there squeeze together now that's done all right that's simple as that so now I can't get the other one back on there no it won't fit now okay it's literally just a nadger's movement okay but that's it that is now squeezed together and you this that's why you got to see that's why you got to get the wheel set out to squeeze it together so I can do me just back to back uh, you've obviously got bearings now once you've got the wheel out you've got to be aware that now your pickups are now sticking out so when you put this back not only have you got to align the bearings to fall back in but you've got to trap your pickups behind all right so I'm going to do that off camera guys because I've basically shown you now how to get it all done and uh, hopefully you know when I reassemble it once I've got the wheel sets done um, I will start from the front again and then get the back on I might I might start the camera again when I'm at that stage to just show you the last little bit of clipping back on there but that's it you know I mean, there's no point in me showing you how to get the other wheels off it's pointless and as I say the bogey frames you know they're not doing any harm they're still at, you know nothing's fallen off they're, they're where they are still attached with their chains but they don't really get in the way of what you're doing on here okay right let's get on with it right I've done all three wheels I've got the base keeper plate is clipped on nicely at the front it's clipped in on these uh, four at each side and now just at the end there you can still see it sticking out a little bit I now need to press down a little bit and maybe use the screwdriver let's have a look and just make sure that she goes behind push down hard on it you can hear the clips there we go and that's you see that's gone is this you see it's gone in underneath the thing now so that is all securely attached so that's me wheels all back in place that's the base keeper plate and obviously you know once I've got the wheels off yeah when you can look down and you can see that the um, all the pickups are nicely behind the wheel sets so you know they're not sticking out they're fine and I can see their spring side to side I can see there's uh, movement the spring is not you know the, the um, pickups not being trapped because I can see that as I move the wheel side to side I can see me pickups all right okay now I'm going to put my side frames back on and it's just you line up 
you know, get start with the front. Get the, get this bogey frame onto the front of the base piece keeper plate to begin with, only ever so slightly. And then make sure these two are lined up, and then you can push them on. And just you know, you just have to make sure that everything slots in place. If it doesn't, this will be distorted outwards. Instead of it being straight, you will see that this has got a bend because this part here, where it's got to go onto the end of the base keeper plate, hasn't gone in and so therefore it will be sort of bowing outwards so if you've got that you haven't got it in place okay so that's the little thing to look out for okay right okay people so she is all back together 37606 this is the one that when it went across the points gave a little knock every now and then so this is the one i've showed you how to take it all apart get the wheel sets showed you how to get the cab off and everything else. So now I'm going to give it a speed step of uh, what we're we going to do. Um, change the direction and give it one, two, three, because that's what she had before. We'll watch her go across the points. And that's the point where it gets, meets the frog. No, there's no deviation there. And she was alright there. I do love the way the chain stretch. You can see the chain stretching, can't you? Alright, so she goes up that end. When she goes up that far, I will send her back. But now she's not knocking on the frog. Even though it was only a slight knock. Right, reverse. I haven't got no lights or anything on. Okay, and this is the one that I did have the motor trouble with that um, seems to be still running fine. Right, here we go. What happens to the bogey? Nothing, no jolts. It's amazing, isn't it? Just a small adjustment has made all the difference to the Hornby set track point. You know, you might... It's because I've got set track, I've got this problem. You probably don't have the problem with Pico. I've no idea. But uh, I didn't have to do this, because you did see that it did actually work. They were set to the correct... <laughs> You know, uh, standard, industry standard. But as I said, Hornby points, they like a little bit of play. And uh, I do love the way the chain stretches. So I've no issue putting it all back together again. Just being very careful, obviously. It can be done. And one more time, then I park her up alongside her stable mate. And there we are. But so we've seen now how to get the bogey frames off. What you've got to be aware of. Hold on, quiet, no, cross there, quiet there, stretch the chain there, look at that chain stretching, nice, I like it, and bring it alongside her sister, and we'll stop it. Okay people, so there we are, so what with the other videos showing you how to get into the motor, you'd have to take the PCB build off and everything, and unsolder the pickup wires here. I've shown you how you carefully remove the cab floor so that you could see the gear tower, how it's attached, it's clipped, it's not screwed like Backman. Um, but that doesn't do you any good to try and sort of drop the bogey down so you know so you could work on the bogey frames because um, you know they're attached by the chains at the end of the day. So e either way you've got the chains are attached, so what can you do? Um, and you know, I've successfully put it all back together again, working around a chain. So you just got to be careful, have a nice set of tools. You saw the base keeper plate come off. Just be careful, make sure that the pickups are back behind the wheels when you're putting the wheels back. If you've had to remove the wheels, like I had to. Um, but yeah, all right, so that's the in the workings of an Acura Scale 37. And I think, um, just to point out, I think all the bodies come off um, the same depending on what what um, version of the 37 you have if you got this although this is a Backman if you got this version I think it's a 4 you would have to take out the little um, you know connector there you know from the front of the nose of the cab so that you could then that thing there the orange uh, you know I don't know what it's called but you would have to remove that just like you've got to remove here on the Backman if you want to take the body shell off you've got to do the same with the Acura Scale 37, but um, because I've got the Y Pack models, you don't have that uh, jumper cable, and um, I don't know if the split head code ones do. I haven't got any of those, but there you are, people. 
So all done and dusted. So there you are. Hopefully I've given you an insight into the workings of a class, a Curiscale class 37. And uh, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so bye folks. I hope that's been of use to you all. All right, bye for now.